We're exploring hidden history in Los Angeles. I'm Olivia Smith, and in this episode, we look at neon art and the huge impact of these handmade glass lights. Eric, tell us where we are right now. You are at the super secret warehouse for the Museum of Neon Arts, and it's filled to the rafters with some of our wonderful neon signs and neon art pieces, but we never share it with the public. Absolutely everything in this warehouse, in our collection, has been donated by a, a mom and pop business, uh, a neon sign collector, or a neon artist. Tell us about neon art and the importance to Los Angeles history. Oh, neon and Los Angeles are completely intertwined. As the American roadside was expanding, Los Angeles was filling the darkness with all sorts of beautiful light. Every mom and pop restaurant, business, even apartment buildings, everybody had to have a neon sign in order to appear modern. When did neon art enter Los Angeles and why specifically neon? Neon came from Paris, France, to New York City, to Los Angeles. And in the 1920s, that's when we saw a, a beautiful, colorful glow of neon finally hit the streets. It was incandescent light bulbs before neon. Neon has been making a presence in movies ever since neon was invented. I mean, you can even go back to film noir movies of the 1950s. It was the glowing beauty of a neon sign in Blade Runner that caught people's eye. The Tender Bar, for example, uses a lot of neon. You could even look to movies like Tron. Flynn's. <laughs> Gotta tell us about Flynn's. Every now and then somebody turns around, sees Flynn's, and they wind up like genuflecting and bowing because they realize what it is. It was donated by Disney Imagineering when that sign was on display in a recreated Flynn's arcade at California Adventure. So not only do we have the donated Flynn's in all of its beautiful glory, we have all of the little supporting uh, arcade figures that were inside the arcade too. The Brown Derby restaurant is definitely a crown jewel in the museum's collection. The 1929 rooftop sign from the Brown Derby at Hollywood and Vine. If you've ever had a Cobb salad, the Cobb salad was invented at this restaurant. Wow, can I touch it? Absolutely. Oh wow, when you touch it, it feels like it's vibrating. <laughs> and that is something that we will let you do, but museum goers cannot touch the glass. Do not touch the glass. They are cool. Yes, not hot. This is not a hot electricity, and so that blue is the glow of argon, but it's yellow. What they do is they actually splice a yellow glass in order to create that yellow glow. So inside is a blue gas, but it glows through a yellow glass. We can make a rainbow of colors and shades out of these elements. Every neon sign you've ever seen is made by hand. It's not a machine, no computer can bend this stuff. We have a classroom at the Museum of Neon Art. It was really important when we moved to Glendale that we develop a class program so that we can teach that next generation of benders. What is the Museum of Neon Art? We have a really unlikely beginning story. Most museums are started by big collectors that had a lot of money, that have endowments. And our museum has always been artist run, kind of a scrappy mom and pop organization. One of the artists who co-founded the museum, Richard Jenkins, was a high school student when he collected a lot of the historic signage that we have in our collection. All the works that you're seeing are really important works of art that use light or use neon light and they're by people that really help to form this idea of what neon art is and who help to form the Museum of Neon Art. When you see a sign in the wild that has corrugated metal like this does with kind of strips down the center, you know it's probably an old sign. This is a style of sign making that kind of went extinct after World War II. Also, it has three-dimensional lettering. That's another key indicator it's a really old sign. This sign, the Lincoln Market, and Win With Winning Wire, these signs are from the 1920s to 1930s. So this is a crowd favorite, the Chinese Theater Dragon. This was once on the exterior of Groman's Chinese Theater. And when we received this sign, it was completely destroyed. Most of the tubing was gone. The paint was all chipped off. So we had to sandblast it, repattern all the neon glass, rebend it, repaint it. It took a community to put this sign back together. 
What you start with is a long tube of glass. It's about this long. You can cut it into, you know, however long you want it to be. And then you use a range of different fires, like the crossfire, the ribbon burner, and the hand torch. We start off with a tube of glass. After we bend it into shape, then we add electrodes on either side. And then what we do is we add this little tubulation onto the electrode and connect it to the bombarder. After it's all sealed up, that's when we can zap it with super high voltage electricity. And in doing that, we're actually burning out all the impurities in the tube. After we purify it, we fill it either with argon or neon gas. A little nervous, but I'm ready to bend some glass. And so I'm just going straight in. Come on up to the fire. Feels good, better than I thought. I am not a fire person. <laughs> and I feel the heat a lot. Oh, you feel the heat. So where do you go? Well done. That is a great <laughs> first try. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about how you could distinguish LED versus neon. LED are light emitting diodes and they're spots of light. And in order to make a continuous string of light, you have to have enough spots of light kind of in sequence. Neon has this distinct warm glow and it's very active. You're seeing lightning in a bottle when you're seeing a neon sign. Whereas LED is a little bit colder, it's usually more dim and the light people, you know, people are biased and especially neon people will say the light does not compare. What happened with neon? You know, is it still around as much today as it was back then? And maybe we just don't notice it as much? You know, neon has ebbed and flowed. What we wound up seeing was plastic started flooding the streets of, of America. We had plastic signs absolutely everywhere. Neon started to disappear. There's still an enormous amount of beautiful neon around LA. The Broadway Theater District in downtown, Hollywood, Chinatown. And at the moment, we're seeing another uptick in neon. There are a lot of people who are interested in making neon signs. And that's huh. great for us because we always want to find that next generation of uh, neon bender who can continue this over 100 year old tradition of bending neon signs.